you for joining us. I'm happy to be here with you. I have a very warm spot in my heart for Acura. At, at Acura, we are allowed to have manager cars, so I've been with the company for 12 years. And out of that 12 years, it's a two-year cycle, five of my six manager cars have been Acuras. In fact, I have one on uh, order right now, which is TLX A-Spec, and I got that and I was a little disappointed, actually maybe a little bit more disappointed, because at the time I had to order the car based on uh, you know policy, the RLX was not available. So anyway, next year, okay? So anyway, thank you for joining us. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've worked at the company for 12 years, as I told you, and I've really had a bunch of different areas in the company. Uh, I worked at the service and technical operations leading that, which is the uh, very interesting world of helping uh, the dealers and customers repair their cars, technical service bulletins, market actions. I also spent a couple years running our export sales division. Um, in April, I came to this area as leading the core um, marketing operations for both Honda and Acura brands. But the first eight years of my uh, time at Honda was spent, and Acura was spent running the product planning group for both Honda and Acura. So I have a lot of history and understanding and fondness about the brand. So during that time, about eight years, I'm very proud of my team because every vehicle of the generations right now for Acura were done underneath my uh, leadership and my team's activities. So um, we have some great truck products and some great with the RDX and the MDX. They're very strong in the market. And we've got some great sedans. So I'm happy here that you had an opportunity last night to see the refresh about RLX. And we're trying to address its competitiveness, and we're going to talk to you about that. Now, Jonathan's really going to give you the details, so I'm going to give you the high-level strategy. So when we launched the RLX in 2013, uh, we had a couple of issues we recognized looking back, right? Because when we tried to figure out how do we improve competitiveness, we look at a bunch of different sources of information. We would actually listen to you guys, um, but if we only listen to you, uh, do you know what we would make? <laughs> Manual station station station. Station. Yes. I, it's brown, that's right, that's what I heard, so thank you very much. I think that would even narrow our appeal. You guys would be happy, but the other thing is you guys don't really buy cars, right? You're always getting everybody else's. So we took that into consideration, plus a couple of things you said, and then we also talked to our customers, the folks that bought the cars, right, and then also the rejectors. And what we found out to improve the competitiveness, we had three key things that we needed to do. One is the availability and the accessibility of our super handling all-wheel drive. When we launched the car, what we realized is, hey, we came to the market with only a two-wheel drive version. And what happened with that is that we abandoned all the old prior RL customers who was a 100% application of all-wheel drive. So we recognized that that was probably a faux pas, right? So we can achieve that. The other thing is that when we brought the Sport Hybrid all-wheel drive version out, which we thought this is the greatest thing, and we do, you will experience that, it was like a year after we had launched the car. So that time frame was too much for the marketplace. The other thing we had there with is that the walk, from a pricing perspective, from the two-wheel drive to the sport hybrid all-wheel drive, was pretty darn big, and we're addressing that. So strategically, accessibility and availability of all-wheel drive. So we have that hit. So we think that'll help improve our competitiveness. The second thing is that we recognize, I mean, it's really amazing. I haven't really looked at this car in a while, but looking at this photo versus the car that we saw last night, we recognize that um, maybe this car was a bit understated for really the performance capability it had inside. So strategically, what we wanted to do was really enhance that styling piece to really show the performance that's within the car to the exterior, right? snazzy it up a bit to use that term. I don't know if we use that anymore. Anyway, so that was the second thing is, right? Improve the, the visibility of performance. Let it say it and speak for itself. The third thing is, unfortunately, with product cadence and timing, things happen that you're like, dang, we just missed the opt optimal way. So what happened is the RLX Sport Hybrid got launched before the NSX Sport Hybrid. And so from a competitiveness and opportunity to really in interest the market, we missed that great opportunity at the launch to link those two cars. But today, hooray, we've got the NSX Sport Hybrid out in, in the marketplace. It's been really well received. And now we can better link this car, RLS Sport Hybrid, along with the MDX Sport Hybrid as a brand halo. So the timing is great. So there's the three areas that we're getting, right? Accessibility and availability of all-wheel drive. Two, more performance-oriented and looking um, uh, styling. And three is really that better linkage between the RLX Sport Hybrid with NSX. 
So NSX is really Acura's North Star for precision crafted performance. And so this car is what we're using for both the marketing activities, the product development, all that is really is how do we head towards that. So each car that we're bringing to the market is really trying to reflect those pieces about who we are, precision crafted performance. So one of those things is the last word of that is performance. So a few months ago, I was really lucky and I got invited by the Acura team to join them at Pebble Beach. And I have to tell you, it was, it was a hoot. It, I couldn't be more proud driving around there with all these wild, prestigious luxury brands. I mean, the cars there are just crazy. And I was so proud of Acura and the NSX being able to hold its own. There were caravans of NSXs driving around. Um, it was really uh, probably a highlight of my career to see that going on. So with that performance piece in my current role of a marketing operations lead, part of my job is really trying to unify the whole organization around how do we support and market these precepts of uh, precision craft performance. So one of those is really leveraging the Acura Motorsports commitment, right? So performance is our name, so we have to do things to give proof points to that we really truly are a performance brand. So in, in Pebble, in addition to you know what we have now as the NSX GT3 car in that program, we brought to market and announced with Team Penske, Roger Penske was there with us, the announcements of taking the Acura DPI prototype and starting in that activity too. And that car and that race will debut at Daytona in January. So we've got the performance piece, right? And what we're trying to do then is, so with each car that we're trying to, we're bringing and refreshing it, we're tying it back to the precision crafted performance and really about building off of that. And we're doing this, and you've seen this actually in both the refresh of the MDX, the refresh of the TLX, we're getting the grill, things are starting to go in the same way. And I guess what I want to tell you too is we had some conversations at the dinner table about, well, why does an Acura follow everybody else? Why don't you have a V8? Why don't you do this? And I guess the symbol that I guess what I'd like to tell you is we have our own view of what a premium luxury brand would look like. And that's what we feel is embodied in precision crafted performance. So we're a little going to follow the beat of our own drummer. And with that, we also think that we have to let people know more about it's a different look at those things. So one of the things, not only with the cars, I mean, really, a, a sport hybrid, I mean, everybody, when we brought out the NSX, thought we were a little crazy doing a hybrid sports car. And that's just another proof point about how we see ourselves as differently and we're viewing the world differently. So not only with the cars do we want to communicate that with our choices that we bring to the market, but we also want to break through and communicate that with our marketing activities. Uh, so I want to show you a little uh, sizzle clip, sort of an overview of what we're doing in the marketplace with our advertising for uh, precision crafted performance. So let's see if we get this work. because. make sure that when consumers hear our advertising, see our advertising, that we communicate that we're really different. It's really difficult to do in a 30 second or 15 second spot when you think about it. So our choice of using vibrant, you know, bold colors, youthful, high energy music, which quite honestly, some of the older execs aren't quite sure what we're doing. I mean, but it's breaking through. Right, the use of the voice of Michael B. Jordan, you know, he's a young millennial uh, as the voice of Acura. 
When you see that, you know that we're not like anyone else. And what we found is, and actually we're really thrilled about this, we found that the millennials and Gen X, you know, the next huge consumer base, and they're actually here, this is really resonating really well with them. Um, they are scoring the actual marketing, um, the, the commercials, our marketing advertising much higher than just on an average. So we, we measure each of the commercials, both of appeal, the breakthrough, the memory, and these commercials are really doing really well. The younger generation, millennials and Gen X, are seeing us as a much more modern and unique brand, which is great. And so we're so happy with that because not only do they tell us that, but we're seeing the intent since 2016 when we relaunched the Precision Crafted Performance, align the organization, Coupled with the, uh, the refreshed vehicles, we're finding that we've had five percentage points increase. That's a huge increase from 26% consideration to 31% consideration. That's enormous. So we're going to ride that wave and keep driving that. All right, so you're probably saying, let's see the commercial for RLX. Well, unfortunately, we don't have one for you yet. And let me tell you why. It's right now, all our plans to launch the commercials and the advertising campaign for this new refresh will happen in January. In, in order not to confuse the market, we are just moving into our season of performance, which is the holiday selling period for Acura. So as soon as that's done, we'll start launching the advertising and that campaign for RLX in January. So keep, uh, keep an eye on that. Um, as you told you before, since one of the strategic activities is really linking the sport hybrid to the NSX, I can assure you, you'll see some good things about that, pulling that together about the sport hybrid um, as a unique aspect of uh, Acura's, Acura's performance uh, view. The other thing is that um, I look forward to hearing about, you know, what you feel with a sport hybrid when you drive that today, right? That should resonate with you too. I hope that you see based on that picture and the comparison of what was in your mind's eye from last night seeing the car. We think that we've done a good job and really a better positioning and showing the performance interior, uh, the heart of this car with a sport hybrid, better in its, you know, what it's wearing. What is that expression about the wolf in sheep's clothing? Is that the old expression? I think we got rid of a little bit of the sheep and sort of letting the wolf show out a little bit more. But of course, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, so you can decide that. But we think we've moved that way. So I hope that you have a great time driving and fun. Um, one of the other little tidbits I'd like to tell you is that I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to drive with you, but during the development of this vehicle, we actually brought this car to Malibu and did some of the rides that you're doing. So R&D and the sales and marketing team did that. So um, it was a hoot. So look for the llamas or alpacas. Um, have a great time. Thank you.